Blaring out with Eric Blair at the seventh annual Johnny Ramone tribute with Joe Escalante of the Vandals. This has been going for seven yeah. years now. Yeah. Tell me what that says to you. Well, it's it's fun every year, and people come out, and uh, you see crazy people backstage, uh, really fun people in the audience, and they always make it new. This year, we got Plan 9 from Outer Space and 3D, and uh, you know sometimes I go, wow, no one wants to hear me ask the same questions to the same people, and sometimes it's the same people, but the event is always different, and so I'm, I'm amazed that they every year they get it going, and they and the venue likes them. Uh, I'm talking to a lady that sells cemetery plots. <laughs> I know how much a plot is here. It's not cheap. And uh, it's just a great place. Now, Joe, what's going on with the Vandals right now? Uh, we're, what are the Vandals doing? You know, we just kind of sit by our phones and wait for it to ring. <laughs> we, have the, we have a great agent, Stormy Shepherd, so the phone rings a lot, and you just go, uh, that sounds good, let me call everybody, and then you... You, oh, that's good. Play in Japan? All right. Okay. You want to play a cruise ship with Weezer? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to play at the, um, uh, you want to play in the Sunset Strip Festival at Billboard Live or whatever that thing's called now? No, that doesn't sound very good, you know? And then, and, uh, but everyone's doing so many different things. Warren, our guitar player, is now writing uh, episodes for this uh, Aquabats TV series, and he's the composer on the show. And he started out working with Yo Gabba Gabba, the uh -huh. TV show. So he's doing a lot of scoring. Our singer still owns a booze distribution company, so he's fine. Josh Fries still famous. <laughs> so, Fries. you know, and then I do, I do some radio, some legal work, and uh, I work. I'll blow your mind right now. Okay. I work as a part-time judge pro tem in L.A. Superior Court. So if you get a traffic ticket or sue someone in small claims or get evicted, there's a possibility you would walk in the courtroom and you would see me on the bench with a robe on, and uh, you'd be doomed. But well, you, if you do see me, you have to, I have to send you to another court because I know you. Are you as hardcore as a judge as you are as a punk rocker? Yes, meaning I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, 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 death penalty for traffic tickets, a little extreme, but somewhere below that, yeah. What, the thing that, that I'm amazed with bring is that... Bring evidence, that's what I say. Just bring some evidence. Bring some evidence. Bring something. Don't come in and say, oh, the cop's lying. Come on. If, if, if that was a defense, then no one would ever be convicted of a traffic offense. So bring some evidence. Have some pictures. Well, have some I, diagrams. You know what, Joe? I can, I can imagine you've heard every ridiculous story in the book being a judge. Yeah, it's uh, the best. The, the most common is there's no way I would do that because I drive by there every day and I know that stop sign, so there's no way I would run it. Kung Fu Records. Kung Fu Records? Well, actually, funny you should mention it. It's kind, you know, it's one of these... Uh, uh, the new style of, of record label is a dormant record label that just releases their catalog, keeps the catalog going, keeps it in the stores, keeps it digital, and then um, put out new records. Forget it. It's a bad business model. But I am putting out a new uh, album by a band called Versus the World. Versus the World is a, um, a band with a guy from the Ataris and a guy from uh, well, Lagwagon, Chris Flippin, Mike. Uh, Davenport from the Ataris, Chris Lippin from Lagwagon, and a couple of the guys that are fantastic mu musicians. And their record's good, so I'm going to put it out. You are also a DJ for a Catholic radio station? This just blows my mind. Well, they don't really call them DJs in the Catholic radio station. It's a, All I do is I host a weekly program, and I'm not the only host. I, we revolve, because it's like volunteer stuff. So I'm in there once a month as a host. I'm going to interview a priest or a bishop or a... Uh, we have we've had um, like a an expert on the satanic uh, underpinnings of the new age movement, something like that. Someone got someone will come and say, oh, yeah, I was in a new age movement and I got really far, and it was Satan. <laughs> and they'll tell their story, and it's fascinating. I have uh, you know people with experience with uh, exorcisms, uh, specific saints, uh, and but mainly most of the time it would be a priest. There's a priest saying. Hey, let's, uh, I want to talk about stuff on the radio in front of a couple hundred thousand people. And uh, they need someone to, you know, bounce the, uh, the theology off of. I'm not a theology expert, but there has to be some kind of a host there. Otherwise, it's just one guy, you know, talking. Well, I'm kind of amazed that how did this come to be? How did you end up getting this job? 
well, I'm a Catholic, and I was talking to my priest one day, and I, he was asking me, what do, what's with this job? You're a morning, I was at the time I was morning radio host at Indy uh, 1031, and I told him what I do, and he goes, well, if you're a uh, in the radio business, why aren't you in Catholic radio? Because <laughs> I don't know anything, I don't know enough. And then after a while, uh, and basically a combination between I learned more about the Catholic faith and... Uh, a Catholic radio station asked my priest for, do you know anybody that's in the commercial radio business but is also a Catholic? We want to we wanna spice up our uh, programming with someone from the more commercial world. So he goes, hey, guess what? Go down there. <laughs> so I went. So I've been doing that. It's called St. Joseph Radio uh, Presents. It's on the EWTN network, which is like the biggest Catholic network in the uh, in, in media, really, in the country. And so a lot of people... A lot of people listen to it, and I learn a lot usually while I'm there. What is a classic memory from your past of you and the Ramones? <sighs> Whether it be an encounter or a show. Well, oh, okay. This is um, the first time I saw the Ramones was at the Long Beach Arena, and they were opening for Black Sabbath, and they they had <laughs> billed it as the Black Sabbath versus the Ramones, and they thought that was funny. And to me, I just saw, okay, the Ramones are coming. I have a Ramones album. I can't believe it. And then I, a brother, my uh, brother-in-law was a Ramones, was a Black Sabbath fan, so I got a ride because it was only 15. So I got a ride, went to the show. Uh, people were throwing uh, all kinds of stuff at him the whole time. And to me, that was awesome because I didn't like the Black Sabbath fans at all. I did not like hippies. Although the Ramones had long hair, uh, you know, we're just, we had just, just you know, kind of discovering punk rock. And we're saying, well, they're punk even though they have long hair, they're punk, and we're trying to figure all this out. But when the hippies hated them, then we knew we were on the right track. And then we went to school the next day, and we have Ramon shirts. The uh, hippies have their Black Sabbath shirts, and there's a war. The war began between the hippies and the punks at, at Los Alamitos uh, High School in Orange County. Joe Escalani, thank you for being on the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show. Blaring out with Eric Blair at the 7th Annual Johnny Ramone Tribute with Joe Escalante of the Vandals signing off. The Blaring Out Show.